fires when the fires have surrounded you. I mean, there's so many cool aspects to this story. I mean, from a, a drama standpoint to stories like that, like cool little stories that you wouldn't know unless you're actually covering it. So mm -hmm. you personally doing this research, uh, doing these interviews, gaining all of this information about the guy, why do you personally think that it's never been covered on a mainstream level like we talked about? Like there's been a few articles here and there that have covered it, whether it was Bleacher Report or other sites, but why do you think it was never like a, a 60 minutes documentary or a 30 for 30? Why do you think it never went mainstream? Because again, he was a big player back in the day. I think there's a couple of reasons for that. Um, first and foremost was <laughs> in this kind of, uh, this sucks to say, but is the timing of it. He yeah. passed away early October 2004. Um, he died the same day that uh, Christopher Reeve, actor who played Superman, right. that came after he, he broke his back in a, in a horseback riding accident, a big advocate um, for persons with physical disabilities. Um, they passed away on the same day. And so the national news coverage was not of Ken Caminiti, it was of Christopher Reeve. Like, he led it off, and that was... So it, it got immediately buried there as just a news story. Um, and this is a news story. A guy who, in 2002, after he admitted to using steroids, was the lead story on, like, CNN that night. Like, it was, yeah, we're escalating the war in Iraq, but first, Ken Caminiti did steroids. Um, so that kind of overshadowed as a national news story. Um, as a baseball story, it got very quickly overshadowed by the Boston Red Sox winning the World Series and breaking the curse of the Bambino. Um, and then there's the aspect of how it happened, um, which is that he died of a drug overdose. Um, and in 2004, we just didn't handle those kinds of things the same way that we do now. Sure, yeah. um, like, uh, it, it's not that long ago, but I feel like just generally as a society, we've come a long way in how we think about addiction and how we think about, um, you know, persons with the problems that, that Ken had. Um, and in a way, he almost just kind of got pushed to the side because of that, um, because at that time, steroids still kind of made you persona non grata in baseball. Um, right. And I even say this in the last episode of the show. Um, you look around at the last five years where, or however long it's been now, Barry Bonds has had a, an MLB hitting coach job. Mark McGuire has been a, a, a hitting coach in Major League Baseball. Alex Rodriguez is on national broadcasts and was in the running to buy a team. Like, steroid users don't have the same stink that they had. 15 years ago when he died. Right. And I think that it would be a case where if he was with us now, um, which is obviously a, a huge if because of his problems, I think he would be someone who would, is very much welcomed into the baseball family and would be uh, coaching somewhere uh, if he wanted to. Um, I really do think that, but just because of the timing of the steroids, of the national news, of the baseball news, it kind of got just brushed off to the side, pushed to the corner, and in a way forgotten about, um, which I think is a real shame. And then, you know, the question of, you know, why hasn't there been a big thing? You know, I guess there's not, there haven't been many people pushing for it, uh, you know. Every once in a while, like, you'll see those threads on Twitter or wherever, like, well, what's one athlete you wish had a 30 for 30 that doesn't, or what's a story that you'd like to see? And you, if you scroll through them, you'll see, you know, a couple of guys and then you'll see a Ken Caminiti thrown in there. And like, there is interest. I, I, I'm seeing that there's interest and that he's still beloved in San Diego, beloved in Houston. Um, and so in a way, it's a little surprising that no one's ever done anything, but it is such a big undertaking and such a complicated story. Um, you know, in, in the conversations that I've had with Dan, the guy writing the book, he has said to me, and, and I wholeheartedly agree with him on this. This is the toughest story to tell um, that hasn't been told in, in sports that hasn't been told yet. Um, it, it's just there are so many layers, uh, so many unanswered questions, things that don't make sense. Um, and it's it 
I know there have been other efforts over the years to do something like this that have, I, I guess people have just gotten to a certain point and given up on. Um, but I am happy that I at least saw my small chunk of this through to the end. And, um, you know, for the first time, I'm really putting everything together, all these fragmented pieces that exist in corners of the internet um, and, and trying to weave together a story. Um, I call it a slow burn because like the first four are just kind of like, yeah, you're building up to the point where you're at now. And then all of a sudden it just gets crazy. Like he becomes this superstar and is on these amazing teams. These unbelievable things happen to him where it's just like, wait, what you're, th th so that happened there. And then you broke your back but you were back for opening day and you played a whole year with a torn rotator cuff and one mvp like just all these crazy things um that make one of the most interesting stories um i think of of any ball player ever 